Guys, Harden here, um, back with another Eve Echoes video. Um, this one is uh, like a request. Uh, a few people have asked to see my Typhoon 2 setup for PvP. Um, now, before I kind of go into the details of the setup, I just want to explain the kind of context that this is being used in because for PvP, context is everything. Um, there's basically PvP is kind of rocks as a paper um, you cannot plan for every eventuality and every encounter um, so what I've tried to do with this fit is kind of be flexible particularly as I'm using this for sort of home defense uh, around the, uh, the our kind of soft systems back in uh, Declan so um, I'm never 100% sure what I'm going to encounter you also need to bear in mind that I'm using this in conjunction with two other typhoons that are a part of my gang um, the one downside to this is I don't really have any tackle on these um, so I do kind of have to rely on other alliance mates um, with bubbles or doing the tackling um, but regardless of that I still pick up quite a few kills in these ships um, so I'm going to jump in first to the fit and kind of explain uh, how this works and then I will um, show you the nano core um, and then I will undock and show you kind of the active stats on this so um, let me just jump in first to the uh, fitting screen um, so the first thing you'll probably notice on here, which may be a little bit odd, is I am using missiles or cruise missiles, some people call it, uh, on this ship. Now, um, if you know anything about missiles, basically there's three types. One is the rapids, one is the cruise missiles, and one is the torpedoes. So the torpedoes are absolutely the best in terms of DPS, and if you know that for 100% sure that you're going to be fighting other battleships at close range they are absolutely excellent and the choice that you should make uh, on the opposite side of the scale you've got rapids uh, rapids do less dps but they actually have very good application um, and um, their dps is not that much lower um, and they are very good for kind of shooting smaller ships so if you know um, that you're going to be going up against inties and cruisers and um, frigates then rapids are, are useful but the drawback for both rapids and torpedoes in my opinion is the range um, now i've got good skills with rapids i reach out to about 50 if I get into the right kind of, um, if I get into the right setting on my implant, I can reach out to about 60 kilometers. Um, torpedoes are shorter. I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's about 25 to 30 kilometers. Um, but the problem is these days you have tackle that's often outside that range. Like some people are pointing you from 50 kilometers. Um, so if you have missiles um, or you're using weapons that cannot actually reach out that far, you're at a big disadvantage. So I actually like the missiles because they actually hit out in this case to 160 kilometers now the other kind of benefit to the typhoon which i'll jump in here and show you is that you do have um a bonus to torpedo explosion velocity i think that was buffed a few times because the typhoon was kind of slightly out of favor so this was kind of buffed a few times so you can see that there is a a um, large missile torpedo explosion velocity bonus there uh, and that particularly helps with being able to hit faster targets so smaller faster targets uh, and then you've got the five percent there on the range so those bonuses are quite good and the other one bonus that's quite useful for pvp is the scan resolution which helps you lock onto targets uh, a little bit faster um, so those are the two kind of ship bonuses that i like because they do help you hit smaller targets and that's why you can use missiles on a typhoon um, again if you're using missiles on a raven then you will struggle with some of the smaller faster targets um, but if you're using missiles on a typhoon they can actually as long as you've got the kind of right rigs and the right setup missiles will actually do damage to those smaller targets so you can see here uh, you've got the missile range there at 160 kilometers which again i like it because it just gives you a lot of flexibility uh, it means that you'll be able to hit targets in 99 percent of the engagements um, and they can kind of really surprise people um, being able to hit out that far um, so it's the flexibility as i said i'm doing a lot of ad hoc pvp never 100 percent sure what i'm going to be going up against not necessarily refitting i'm just kind of wandering around uh, in our own space um, looking for targets so i find the flexibility of having that range really does help um, you can see here the um, explosion velocity here on these is pretty good it's 142 meters a second and just to explain that that means that if a ship is 
is traveling at uh, 142 meters a second or slower, um, the missile should be able to deliver most of its damage when it hits it. Uh, again, that's uh, affected by the explosion radius as well. Um, so the explosion radius, um, you want that to be as small as possible. You want the explosion velocity to be as high as possible. But 142 meters a second on a large uh, weapon system is pretty good uh, for the missiles. The explosion radius could be better, um, but at 181 meters a second, it still delivers uh, damage um, onto smaller ships. Uh, unlike um, turrets, missiles never miss so you will always hit it then just depends on how much damage you apply and as i said with the typhoons in bonuses uh, it does mean that you can um, hit inties uh, cruisers battle cruisers very very nicely with missiles um, so that's my the kind of reasoning for my high slots uh, mid slots is again it's kind of a personal preference it's really up to you but you can see the overall fit here i have gone with a um, passive tank so I have not gone uh, for an active tank and that primarily the reason for that is I find that these days um, a lot of the people you're fighting especially if you tend to fight other battleships the amount of DPS they put out really does overwhelm reppers these days so unless you're fitting three reppers on a ship and even then sometimes you can't keep up with the damage so what I prefer to do now is just ensure the tanks passive tank is extremely good you can see here the defense here is 160,000 but that's before I activate any of the hardeners and the damage control there so I'll show you that when it's active but um, basically my the concept around this design is to kind of minimize the incoming damage and that's why you'll see in the mid slots here I have two tracking disruptors and one um, missile guidance disruptor so the two tracking disruptors the reason I have two and only one missile guidance is you tend to come across more uh, ships using turrets in which case the tracking disruptors are more effective missile guidance is there as a backup if you do come across um, a, a raven or a typhoon um, so primarily I use the tr two tracking disruptors and and again, bear in mind, I'm flying this in a fleet with two other Typhoons that are pretty identically fit. Um, you can, I can be applying six tracking disruptors, um, which severely limits or reduces the amount of incoming damage from the uh, from the enemy. So um, that's the kind of concept there. Um, I've had a few fights where that seems to have worked. I had one the other day where one of my, in fact, it was this pilot went in against a, a very pimped out Megatron and um, again with the tracking disruptors was able to kind of hold out on the passive shield long enough for my other two uh, typhoons to catch up and then we just kind of the the megathron which was kind of like more glass cannon fit uh, died quite quickly at that point um, and then the other for the final mid slot is uh, a target painter which again just helps with applying damage to uh, applying damage to targets particularly smaller ones um, you'll see that the overall dps here again is not necessarily that impressive 2005 533 um, but again that does jump up uh, when um, when I put the uh, impl when I use the implant mode which I'll show you in a minute in terms of the low slots I've already touched on this um, I have three um, hardeners uh, so here you can see here the um, the gisti uh, um, adaptive um, let's just press on that sorry uh, adaptive and vulnerability field um, so I have three of those um, and I have one um, all ran damage control which again when those are activated on the ship puts my tank up to around uh, put my passive tank to or ehp to around 300,000 which does take the enemies some time to chew from and again um, I wouldn't be using this setup uh, I don't think I'd be using this setup if uh, if I knew it was just like a 1v1 uh, then it might make more sense to have an active tank uh, but at the same time I also if you're using it going into a big fleet fight uh, passive tank I think these days kind of works better it buys you a little bit more time um, because again with a, a, an ordinary shield booster uh, even with good skills um, and with rigs you're looking at about 1,000 150 uh, rep per cycle um, so if you have two of them on it's 3000 that's every six to eight seconds so um, again you could do the math which I'm not mentally doing very well but uh, let's say in the space of 10 seconds you may be able to rep uh, around 3000 ish 
uh, 3000 ish DPS. Um, whereas with this fit, you've got 300,000 to start with. It takes the enemy time to chew through those. And um, as I said, I just find that um, using shield, uh, shield boosters these days, obviously you're using a lot more cap. Um, and I just find that the DPS tends to overwhelm them now. Um, I'll jump in quickly. Oh, and then the final two low slots here. Uh, one is a ballistic control, obviously um, for the extra DPS. And the other one is a missile guidance which again just helps with the large missiles in terms of one, the range that's why it's up to 160 um, but also in terms of hitting the targets um, uh, the smaller targets if I jump into the nano core here I'm just taking a bit of time to load up okay so I'll run through the basic attributes first so you can see here it's got the missile torpedo damage the uh, primary attribute uh, and then again another missile damage uh, there in the secondary attributes the capacitor is an extra 11% which is quite nice uh, and then you've got the thermal damage which is uh, again what this ship is kind of built around and then some additional shield which again helps with the passive tank so I've only unlocked I think the first uh, unlocked the first four of that um, then you go on to the the expanded attributes and you again because this is a thermomagnetic storm core um, you have that extra 22.5 percent uh, weight if in thermal damage and again you combine that with the 10 percent uh, 10.64 percent here that is about 32 uh, 33 percent extra damage uh, extra thermal damage on those missile launchers and then the next one here is the large missile torpedo activation time which works out to about an extra 10 percent 11 percent in terms of uh, DPS um, so that's why even though it's quite a tanky setup there's only two damage mods on there um, it actually does deliver some quite nice DPS now bear in mind this is one of the differences that the nano core is one of the differences between this particular one and my other two accounts which both have uh, oh god what's it called the more tanky uh, I think it's dark halo I'm not sure but it has a, a lot more shield on there and less DPS so my other two typhoons tend to be a bit more tanky with less DPS uh, I'm just going to quickly show you uh, the rigs here um, so again the um, these ones here are the capacitor control circuit uh, and then the semiconductor memory cell and the third one here is the targeting system subcontroller because again I find for PvP being able to lock on quickly is definitely an advantage um, the ship is again using missiles uh, with no active tank and uh, doesn't use that much um, doesn't use that much capacitor um, so I can go with um, the targeting system subcontroller and the cap is still um, stable like you can see they're very uh, very easy on the cap there so um, no kind of issues oh let me jump back in uh, no kind of issues in terms of the um, the capacitor um, now on this side uh, and again this is uh, a questionable decision but you can see here I have have a core defense field and what that does is it increases the shield by 30 percent which again just goes helps with the passive tank um, so that kind of um, boost the the ehp of the ship now these two are kind of uh, interesting so it's integrated now normally uh, most people don't suggest doing uh, integrated rigs on a pvp ship because they cost about a billion a pop um, but the i'm tending to use cheaper rigs in these so the actual loss you get the you tend to get the um you tend to get the you get the integrated module back and then you simply have to replace the rigs so you can see here in terms of the rigs um it's the warhead flare catalyst which is a very very cheap rig it costs about it's under a million per per pop on the on the um uh, on the warhead flare catalyst uh, the level three so you can replace six of them for about six million which is is virtually nothing in today's sort of economy in eve echoes and uh likewise if you look at this one you can see that um, i've also got six warhead rigor catalysts which again similarly uh, are very very cheap under a million and the warhead rigor catalyst what that does is it improves the explosion radius bonus which uh, reduces the size of that which as i said uh, reducing explosion radius bonus does help with hitting uh or, or applying damage to smaller ships and on this one the uh, warhead flare catalyst what that does is it increases the explosion velocity which again as I said 
does help you deliver more damage on ships that are moving faster so that's why i've picked those and then the other two is the warhead uh, cut um cut uh, catalyst which is just a straight 14 percent damage bonus and then in this one the other one is the bay loading accelerator which is an additional 10 percent um the only thing i might change on this is actually the bay loading accelerator is actually better than the um catalyst the calefaction so i may at some point if i lose this ship um switch it around the only thing is the uh bay loading accelerator is uh, a bit more pricey I, let me just see uh, if you look at that now it's what's that 16 million per piece so if i lose that you're looking at about an 80 million approximately 80 million loss whereas the um calef calefaction is if i look at that is about 4 million um so again if you lose six of those you're looking at around uh 24 um million so it definitely is uh, a bit cheaper but again I, I it's one of those things where um, you don't want to um, give uh, have big expensive uh, lost mails um, but I do find that these integrations they don't really cost that much uh, does cost that little bit more IP but it doesn't make a huge difference um, it, but it does make instead of your typhoon being something like 2 billion on the kill mail it's something like 4 billion instead so it does make that difference some people do complain about that when i do lose these but luckily i don't lose these too often um so if i um, jump back here uh so i think i've shown all of the fit here um i don't know if there's anything else i want to point out here the only other thing i would say is the uh, typhoon as a minimum ship is quite a fast battleship in terms of battleship so um, i do find keeping the ship moving while in combat um, does reduce some of the income Coming damage so often I will kind of orbit my own my own ships because it does it does have an impact on the amount of incoming damage and uh, then when you combine that with the tracking disruptors and the missile guidance it does does uh, take it the enemy even longer to chew through um, and then what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to undock and um, just show you the active uh, let me just double check there's no because uh, I am in 0, 0.0 here let me just double check that there's nobody outside uh, no okay so let me just minimize that and undock here and again i will i do tweak this from time to time this setup um if i know there's somebody specific that i'm going to be going to fight then i can tweak it but often the case is i only have like an hour or so to do pvp in the evenings uh so i don't really have that much time to kind of fiddle around with settings or kind of um kind of customize what i'm doing so i tend to go for this sort of all-purpose fit and it does tend to work quite well uh, so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to jump in and i'm going to show you implant mode here um, so um, this is the uh, range enhancing implant so if i jump into the fitting now um, you can see once i've activated that one uh, my dps has gone down slightly um, but my my implant is quite high so it hasn't had that much impact on the dps and now if you look at the missile range it's now hitting out to 200 kilometers so it adds an extra 40 kilometers on there so again i don't tend to use that because not many people are at 200 kilometers but again it is an option if you've got somebody kind of uh, bugging you at range um, the next one here is the precision mode um, and again I'm going to jump in here um, and I will show you on the missile what impact that has you can see the DPS has gone down a bit more it's 2165 which again is still reasonable DPS for a, 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 like a, a T10 battleship but um, what you'll find here is the application gets that bit better so you can see the explosion, explosion radius has now gone down from I think it was was it 118 120 it's now down to just under 100 so again that helps with applying damage uh, on smaller ships and you can see the explosion velocity has also increased to 142 meters a second so again that will help you hit faster moving targets so or at least apply a bit more damage depending on the speed of the target so anything that's moving under 442 you theoretically should be applying full damage from the missile uh, but then you have to take into account the explosion radius so again the precision mode don't use it very often but if uh, i am being attacked by um, an inti or some daredevil kind of orbiting me at close range um, activating that mode um, can actually have quite a nice uh, quite a nice impact um, on the damage being delivered because as i said missiles will always hit so as long as you're 
as long as you're, uh, you've got the right stats on there, um, you can still hit uh, very fast, small moving targets with them, uh, especially if you go into precision mode. Um, and then here is the EM mode. I'm not going to show that one, uh, but I'm, I'm going to show you the thermal because that's the one where um, my nano core is kind of um, tailored to that. So if I jump in now, um, you can now see that the DPS on this has jumped up to a very respectable 3,743 um so uh yeah and then, as i said i'm flying this in combination with two other typhoons so uh in total you're looking at around well they're not as high because their nano core is different um but it's probably around eight or nine thousand dps um that they can deliver uh per so the damage per second so again very easily able to overwhelm kind of active uh active tanks um, and uh, let me just see what else am I going to show you again if I activate uh, this here the um, missile guidance if I jump in again and show you on the missile here what impact that has uh, let's see okay so yeah and then you can see here that the explosion velocity is now down to 69 meters a second which is again very nice and the explosion radius um, has oh, the explosion radius was I getting the wrong way around? So I'm confusing myself here. The explosion radius is down, is up to 330, and the explosion velocity is 69 meters a second. I don't know. That seems counterintuitive. Maybe I was okay. Well, apologies, guys. I'm, maybe I was confusing the two of those, and I apologize if I've done that. I don't hope. I thought I had that the right way around, but okay. Um, and or is that something to do with my implant it's possibly got something to do with my implant um, okay and then the final thing I'll show you here is in terms of the tank here we jump in now uh, and you can see that the defense here is 280 uh, 288,000 uh, which again is a lot of tank for people to chew through especially if they're being tracking disrupted or they have uh, missile guidance computers on them um, and then if I activate the um, damage control you can see that uh, here it's now up to 852,000 albeit that doesn't last for very long um, so I do prefer, in terms of PV, uh, PvP, random sort of PvP, just kind of roaming around in my own space, I do like these Typhoons. Um, the Raven Navy, uh, again, has very, very good damage application and um, has a very, very nice tank and would probably do a much better job all around than these Typhoons, um, but comes at a significantly higher price tag. I think that's just the, just the hull alone will cost you 20 billion. Um, so that has a bigger impact on IP uh, the other thing is the typhoons I think people underestimate them sometimes so sometimes I get fights people will pick on me some of the smaller ships will pick on me outside a station thinking oh it's just a typhoon and then get a very nasty surprise so um, that, that's these are the kind of ships I'm flying in general day-to-day -day PvP I have obviously got um, some kind of CTA fit ships and so on um, but this is kind of my regular run-of-the-mill typhoon um, anyway I hope that kind of explains it I, I know a few people have asked on my other videos um, um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. If you have any suggestions, do let me know. I'm always learning. Uh, I'm always happy to kind of pick up some tips. Uh, I definitely have improved uh, some of my ship's performance as a result of feedback from you guys. So uh, feel free to jump in with any constructive criticism you may have. So I um, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please do like and subscribe if you, if you do. Uh, many thanks. Good night. Fly safe. Bye.